Great to have you on today. Uh, walk me through the big headline here coming out of the earnings. Uh, what stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a very solid result, very good auto gross margins. Um, uh, so, you know, sign that the underlying business is performing well. Um, and I think, you know, one of the nuances within the quarter, there was clearly some odd news around uh, or surprising news around their strategy on batteries. They they announced that they're, uh, they had commented that they think uh, two thirds of their batteries will eventually be iron based. So LFP versus their current, you know, predominant technologies, which is NCA. Uh, that was sort of the, the one sort of strategic update that I think uh, was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, we're seeing shares uh, trading lower today. Wondering what you see as maybe outside of that, maybe weakness that investors might be digging into because there's no shortage of strengths, I think, to point to in the quarter. But looking ahead, uh, how are you shaping up uh, or how are you sizing, I guess, uh, Tesla's ability to push back against the wave of competition that's coming for them in the EV space? Well, I think in terms of the decline today, I mean, the market's down and a lot of the growth names are down. So I think that's one. I think, two, that the results were very good. So I really don't want to knock you two results. I think the question is the market's forward looking. And, you know, will they be able to hold these auto margins as we go into Q3 and Q4? I think is probably why there's some maybe trading down as people probably are a bit skeptical of that. Uh, raw material costs of the batteries are up a lot. That That's part of the reason why we have probably have some of this strategy away from a nickel-based chemistry. Um, and you also have the Model Y standard rain version was uh, just introduced at the beginning of this quarter. And so there'll be some mixed headwinds as we go into the second half from that launch because it's a significantly lower price than the long range. Um, so I think there's some skepticism, you know, can this you know, very strong result you know, be maintained? And then, as I mentioned, I mean, there is a, an odd update. I mean, realize they had a whole battery day on a nickel-based chemistry. And you know, now they're talking about eventually, and, and we don't really know what that time frame will be, that they're going to be shifting to something more iron-based. Effort, Colin, efforts. we did no. we did also hear Elon Musk uh, talk about the bottleneck bottlenecks in the supply chain, specifically talking about the chip supply, saying that that's going to fundamentally um, govern be the governing factor on output going forward. What does that supply chain look like, um, as as far as you know, and how big of a weight is that going to be um, in, in holding back Tesla as they try to keep this momentum going? I mean, that's a tough question for every company I cover. Uh, Tesla has actually fared far better than uh, most of the automakers and definitely most of the U.S. automakers. Uh, from you know our chats with people in the supply chain, I talk regularly with my semi-analyst uh, here. Uh, probably by it'll really take to get sort of full recovery the middle of next year. Um, so we seem to be coming out of it, but even this month we've had some surprising cuts from all of the the Detroit three. Um, so you know it, it, we still have some choppiness here, uh, but expectations are the supply is is back online. We have some good news with the Renaissance plant that was one of the bigger issues. Seems to be back to 100% capacity at the end of last month. Uh, so signs are we're, we're getting better. Uh, that said, you know we've had a, a lot of issues along the way. There were plants put offline because of the, the winter storms in Texas. We had a renaissance fire. Um, so one more glitch here and, and we could be back into a, a squeeze again. Uh, but it seems like we're going to see a slow grind out over the next year, though. And it's going to take a year really to make up the, the lost capacity. And lastly, I mean, when we look at maybe one of the surprises, aside from the battery uh, updates you mentioned there, uh, Elon Musk saying they might not be taking a front and center role on the earnings calls anymore. You had people kind of uh, speculating whether or not that could mean he's preparing to pass the reins off to somebody else there. Uh, I mean, how important is that? And, and again, just kind of trying to value this company. It does seem like he has, obviously, every time he tweets, there's impacts, not just at Tesla, but everywhere in the market. But uh, I mean, you got an equal weight rating in 590 as the price target. Is there any change to your thesis around the company if that is the case, if Elon Musk is stepping away? I, my price target is now 660, but um, I mean, uh, there's definitely a risk. I mean, there, he's obviously pretty critical to the company. So, I mean, I, I don't read too much. I mean, the, the earnings calls already are a little untraditional where we're taking questions from retail investors, institutional investors. I think only a quarter of the call were uh, the traditional uh, questions from sell side analysts. So, um, you know, I, you know, it's an interesting move. I'll say that. I don't know too many of my companies that the CEO won't be available for all the earnings calls. Um, but this is a pretty untraditional company. I don't read too much into it. I, I think the company well understands how important he is. He has a very uh, aggressive and large compensation package. So I think there's financial interest for him to stay around. Um, 
So I, I, I don't see him stepping away, but uh, obviously, you know, could raise some concern there for sure. And he's definitely very critical to the company and the stock.